So I've only been able to really hint at it and talk at it for about a, for a little bit. But Devin Bush did really struggle in that first preseason game. Again, a first preseason game. But it is important to look closely at what were the struggles and if they will carry forward into the next two preseason, game, preseason games and the rest of the season. And, of course, Steelers fans are all over Roquan Smith requesting for a trade. There's a big question there. I'm going to address that, the backup running back situation, and a lot more right here in the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Big you your daily dose of all things of the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find the show on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. If you're watching this video on YouTube, hit the like button if you're if you're enjoying the show. Hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel to get all of our daily Monday through Friday episodes. We, we thank you for making us your first podcast listen every day. If you want to help out the show even further, go on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a five-star review with a positive comment. Do both at the same time. You get a special shout-out at the end of the show. I want to lead with Devin Bush because the last two episodes, we've talked a lot about the offense, and rightfully so. They lit it up. They put up 30 points, eat every quarterback to a touchdown. We've talked all about them ad nauseum and probably will do a little bit more um, as this preseason goes on because, hey, quarterback. But we got to talk about the defense. And I, I also I brought up I'm not charging the defense with they're going to be bad after we saw – the entire defensive front was just not there. Not just the defensive line, but TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith. None of those guys, um, we, you know, were available. To take, uh, Cam Hayward, Tyson Alou, Larry Ogunjobi. That defense is going to look completely different when those guys are in there. But we do have to look at Devin Bush. Miles Jack looked fine, had run fits, did what he would, what did. What I saw from him what I saw from him in camp, and he's fine. Devin Bush, I didn't see what I've seen in camp because some people are going to say, oh, well, he's just the same guy. I have seen a different guy in practice. He's made plays in the football, both against the run and the pass. He's been aggressive. He's made those types of plays happen. But in this game, he went right back to the shell we've been talking about. And I, I've brought up how on the 16-yard cutback by Homer, uh, the Seattle Seahawks running back, Bush just stood there, didn't do anything, and it was just a very bad rep and a very bad look on tape. But then I went back and I watched even further, and I studied everything he did. And some of the plays didn't go his way. But when you look at the fact that he was on the field for 15 snaps and he registered nothing in those 15 snaps, not a good look. Now, there was a, I think there were a few coverage reps where he was in the right position, but the Seahawks tried to run the ball. And Devin Bush wasn't anywhere to be found. And in fact, there were seven times that he that they officially ran the ball while he was on the field. And none of the times he had an assist, a tackle, nothing. He left literally left this preseason game with nothing on his stat line. And that's not a doomsday thing. It doesn't mean it's terrible, but it does awaken reawaken the concerns from last year. And anybody who knows me knows I'm not a Devin Bush hater. I'm not a person who said he was a bum last year, called him a bust, or any of the things that lots of people on social media were willing to label him. I have been very upfront in saying, hey, I think that Devin Bush deserves a chance to grow from his mistakes, to learn, to get back from, to be healthy, and be given that time. But that time is now. And for a first go in preseason, that was about just as bad as we saw last year. And it doesn't mean that Devin Bush can't grow out of it, but being in the last year of his rookie deal, the Steelers need to see something from him if they're going to pay him money to stick around. And his athleticism, again, still important. I still think he's the better option over Robert Spillane, who also didn't really have a good game either. Uh, same thing for Buddy Johnson, Mark Robinson, all the other guys, even though Mark Robinson did make a big sack at the end of the game. You know, Miles Jack seems to be the guy who can settle things down, but Devin Bush has to has to play better. There's no doubt about it. He has to, he has to process his keys faster. He has to learn when to step up. It seems like he's unsure when to be aggressive in the moment. And so, sometimes – there, it, it's all. There's a big part of it that is that the defensive line in front of him is just getting washed, and they're getting blown up into him. And there's times that that happened, but this is the, this is the time for him to step up and make it happen. In this second preseason game, I fully expect the defensive front to be there, and to and so this will be the time if he if he's not looking this way 
at this point in the game, then the serious question is going to be like for the Steelers, hey, do we go to the regular season with him as our number two linebacker? Because if you do, and he's still playing like that in the regular season, it's going to lead to problems. Now, an obvious fix-all that a lot of Steelers fans have been pointing out has been since the news broke that Roquan Smith wants to uh, wants to wants to, has requested a trade to leave the Chicago Bears. Everyone's saying, "Go get Roquan Smith. Do whatever you do to get him." And listen, I love Roquan Smith. I loved him when he was coming out in the 2018 NFL Draft out of Georgia. I love the way he plays football. The man had 163 tackles last year. He's had over 100 tackles in every season he's played in the NFL, and he's 25 years old. If you were able to get a Roquan Smith, that would be awesome. But I don't know if the Steelers have all the chips that they need to go get this guy. Sure, you could. A lot of people are proposing Chase Claypool and Devin Bush and a third round pick and blah 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 blah. I'm not so sure if I'm if I'm the Bears if I, if I make it for this guy. Roquan Smith looks like a guy who could be one of the better linebackers in the in the NFL draft. He was an eighth overall pick. This wasn't just a a twentieth pick that turned into a really great pick. He was the eighth overall pick. They drafted this guy to be the new face of their defense, and they need players like him. For the future, he's on his fifth year extension right now. There's, he's not signed anything in the future, so this would be a one year rental with the Steelers having to renegotiate his contract. So, two aspects as to why I'm not so sure this Roquan Smith trade happens. If it does, I mean, here's the thing: in all heart of hearts, if if the Steelers, if Omar Khan could pull this off, it would be a phenomenal trade. They would get a, the Steelers would get a phenomenal linebacker. Him and Miles Jack together, I think, would be locking down the linebacker position and in the Steelers defense, they're top three, I think in the, in the, in that conversation with him on the, with him on the roster and maybe even top one um, when, when all said and done, but you look at Roquan Smith like this year, he, because of his fifth, fifth year extension, he's taken up $9.7 million uh, in, in salary cap space. But when you look at other linebackers out there and, and what they're making, you know, Fred Warner is making an average of $19 million per, per year from the from the 49ers. CJ Mosley, $17 million. Even the more reserved ones like Zach Cunningham with the Titans or Levante David, they're in the $11, $12 million range. That's a lot of money to be spending. And, and this is a guy who's at 25. All those guys I said, they're older than that. So Roquan Smith is going to be looking to get paid. He'll be 26 next year. And the Steelers have to consider not only for trading up pieces like a Chase Claypool, like Devin Bush, and, and, and a draft pick to get this guy. Could you afford to keep Roquan Smith on the payroll while you're funding everything else that you, that you got going on? Because we talked about how the Steelers had a lot of money to figure things out this year without Ben Roethlisberger. Well, they figured out a lot of that. T.J. Watt got his big payday. Mika Fitzpatrick got his big payday. Deontay Johnson got a big payday. Chris, po Chris Boswell got a big payday. And now you're sitting there and you're saying, okay, cool. Who else are you going to pay? It's projected that as of right now, the Steelers have about $15.6 million in salary cap space for next year. That's probably going to go up when we figure out how much more money the, the NFL is going to allow teams to spend because the revenue has increased. I say all that to say the Steelers might not have enough money to go get Roquan Smith or to, to, to not only after they get Roquan Smith to keep him here long, for long term and fund all the other positions that they need to, to fill out this roster. And that's where I think they might run into the biggest challenges. And if you're Omar Khan, do you give up all this capital to get him and then give up the capital of your salary cap space to keep him? If you can find a way to make it work and not compromise the rest of your roster in rebuilding the offensive line and rebuilding the entire offense, really, fine, great, do it. And and this is part of why you have when you, what happens when you have you know inexpensive quarterbacks. But you're still you're still concerned because you want to address you want maybe you want to get a top cornerback, maybe you want to get this, maybe you need that draft pick to stay young and healthy and, and, and keep and keep addressing certain positions of need in the draft. Those are things that I think make this a lot harder of a question than what some Steelers fans on Twitter and Instagram and you know, people that are proposing this trade idea are making it seem. So I'm not saying it definitely won't happen. I'm saying it's very it's very unlikely. Um, I think the Steelers have been aggressive and Omar Khan has been aggressive so far. If he did, it would be a huge move, a a a a. Uh, a landmark move for him early in his early in his career. We've already seen it with with uh, the Minka Fitzpatrick extension, the Chris Boswell extension, and uh, the Deontay Johnson extension. Making a trade like and going and getting Larry Ogunjobi, a trade like this would would kind of I think would even jump ahead of all of those to say, wow, that was a move. Uh, but again, we'll see what happens. 
I think the other thing is the Steelers are going to give Devin Bush time. They're not rushing into anything. The Steelers don't want to be backed into a corner and forced to do something. And if Devin Bush turns it around, starts to show progress in the second and third preseason games, awesome. They won't feel the need to do that. But if he doesn't, then hard questions are going to have to be asked. We've already seen former Steelers linebackers Joe Schobert and John Bostic get snatched up late in free agency. Uh, I, I don't think that they'd want to go for that. I think they'd want to find some answer, a veteran somewhere, who can fill in next to Miles Jack and make the linebacker position not a problem. But again, that's if Devin Bush doesn't get right. We, we will see if he gets right very soon. But the per, people, per, a, a battle that has been getting right is the backup running back position, and specifically Jalen Warren. I want to give you an update on my thoughts on him because we saw some we, we saw some more interesting things out at training camp at St. Vincent College where the Steelers resumed for their last, day, last week of training camp on Monday. We'll talk about that. In just a second. But first, we got to talk to you guys about one of our great sponsors, Athletic Greens. Now, if you don't know about Athletic Greens, they are an amazing partner. They have a product called AG1 that I use all the time. If I forget to prepare meals, I often forget. That means I probably forgot to get the proper nutrients in my, da in my daily uh, diet. I didn't get the salads that I wanted to plant throughout the day. AG1 is a product that's going to help you get better he gut health, more energy, and optimize your immune system. And as an asthmatic, it's helped me breathe a lot easier, especially dealing with the heat and running around all the time at St. Vincent College. AG1 is a product that I've been on for, for about a few months now, and I love it. It's it, it doesn't taste like it's super healthy, but it is super healthy. And it gets you all the nutrients that, that you miss out on when you didn't get to, to meal prep for, for your for your week. And it's it's not heavy to gulp down. It's gulp down. It's just a mild tropical taste that I actually look forward to every morning. With one delicious scoop of athletic greens, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, vitamins, minerals, whole food source for superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. The special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, aging, and all the things. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season when it comes up in the fall. You want to get ready by getting it all in the summer right now. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day, and that's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. It costs less than $3 a day and contains less than one gram of sugar and supports better sleep, sleep, sleep quality. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs for your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network. Again, that's athletic, athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. We just got done talking about the linebacker situation and why I don't think a trade's going to happen. But there's a good situation going on in the running back room. Um, now, full update, Benny Snell was not back at practice on Monday. But guess who was running the second team with the running backs? It was Jalen Warren. Y'all know Jalen Warren. Y'all been hearing me hype him up in training camp. You saw him busting plays, scoring touchdowns in the, in the preseason games. He was running the second team, and Mike Tomlin continues to be impressed with the guy. He makes catches. He, ext he extends the ball. He falls forward. He's doing a lot of the things that you need to do to be a good backup running back. And in that game, he took six carries for 34 yards. It's over five yards per carry. You're happy with that. Um, and he, he also caught four passes for 30 yards and a touchdown. That's 10 touches for over 60 yards. That's good, reliable yardage for a backup running back. And what impresses me the most about Jalen Warren is that it's one thing to hit a hole hard and just hit it hard and fall forward. But when he's going into the defense, when he, when he sees his hole and he attacks, Jalen Warren already has on his mind how to absorb or, or redirect a defender who's coming to, to attack him and bring him down. So many times you see a defender bounce off of him. It's different ways. He'll truck a guy. He'll spin off a guy. He'll juke. He'll juke away from a guy. Or they'll bounce right off of him, and he'll sort of just like absorb it, regain his feet, and then keep it and keep it going. This is something that he's done so well is that he's redirecting his body weight. He's keeping he's keeping it in mind to be looking for the next guy, and he doesn't seem phased. It's, it'd be one thing like when he did it for like a, like a couple of days. I was like, okay, okay, undrafted rookie doing a good job. That's cool. Let's see how he keeps it up. But this has been about three weeks now that I've been really impressed with Jalen Warren. And I've been like, huh, wow, this guy's doing pretty good. And 
it doesn't seem like he's slowing down. And in this preseason game, this was the time for to see, hey, maybe if this is a fluke, the game will speed up for him. The opponents will get faster. This isn't the defense that he's been playing against every day. There'll be someone to – and it didn't happen. He was ready. He kept bouncing off of guys. And Mike Tomlin rewarded him by playing him on the second-team offense. Now, I will say part of this is also going to be about health and opportunity because Benny Snell was the number two running back. And as, as a person who watched all the practice, I'm telling y'all, Benny Snell looked good at the position. Now, he didn't wow you the way Jalen Warren has, but he was solid. He was reliable. He was getting the yards that were there. He was picking up the, the pass rushers in, in pass protection. He was playing at a level that's like, okay, you're a reliable backup running back to come in and help out with the different roles that the running back requires when Najee Harris gets hurt. And then Anthony McFarlane looked good in camp. I was waiting to see it in the game. He showed it in the game with seven carries for 56 yards. So then you have Jalen Warren, and then I, I've had a lot of YouTube comments just say, why aren't you talking about Master Teague? Because I'm talking about everyone else on the team. But I will say, Master Teague, I have liked. I First of all, I liked Master Teague back when he, Master Teague the third, by the way. I liked him back in the days when he was with Ohio State. I liked him when, when he was he was a hard runner. Even when he was the third best running back on that roster, you saw his attitude and what he brought every day. You liked what he brought to the table. I've liked what he's brought to the table at Steelers training camp. He's been physical. He's challenged guys. He's he's hit the whole hard. Now, is he a little bit a little bit slower? Sure. And the Steelers could use a quicker pace of running back like an Anthony McFarlane or Jalen Warren. But Master Teague is, is tough and physical, and I think that he's the kind of running back that Mike Tomlin likes to have on his roster, at least on the practice squad. So this comes down to this. If you're asking yourself, okay, Chris, well, who's going to be the backup running back or who are going to be the, the backup running backs? Because it's not just going to be one guy. It's going to be two, maybe three. I'm leaning to two because Derek Watt's still going to be in the equation, and then you still got three tight ends, and you still got to figure out how you're keeping six wide receivers. Running back is not going to be a room that they overload and cost themselves a roster spot at corner, wide receiver, safety, linebacker, whatever. Defensive line, it's just not happening. They're not, they're not doing that. So – they're keeping two of these guys, and they're going to try and stash some, someone on, on the practice squad. Benny Snell has to get healthy because I truly see how it's going to work out is they're going to keep a veteran who's been on the team for a couple years, like Benny Snell and Anthony McFarlane, and they're going to keep one of these undrafted rookies in Master T, also Mateo Durant. I will say he's in there. He had a really good block that sprung Kenny Pickett on the sideline. But he hasn't had the same kind of production as these other guys, in my opinion. I think that he he's kind of be looking like a real odd man out in this situation. Um, but Jalen Warren and uh, and Master Teague, I think they're showing a little bit of something. Now, if I was to take now, if if I'm the Steelers and I know how they operate, I think that they're gonna what they're gonna try to do is one that they you know, they always do best man who wins the job and all that, but. I'm keeping one of those veterans who knows the system. I'm keeping one of those veterans who, who's who been here a couple years and knows what to expect day in and day out of the NFL daily life. But if the other veteran is teetering with the younger guy who's just got there, and especially if that younger guy's Jalen Warren with the way and he keeps making people miss going into the third preseason game, I think I'd give him the edge. And so this is why I say Benny Snell, you got to get back healthy soon. Because, because, and I will say, Benny Snell also is a fantastic special teamer. Gets the job done there. That's a big reason why he stuck with the team for so long, because he, he does his, his job so well you know, on special teams. But that alone will not save you if you do not, if you do not, can't you, if you're not healthy enough to participate consistently. I think Anthony McFarland's a guy who's who's shown who's shown more promise there, and I think that he's also a, a profile of a, of a running back, a faster running back that they love to add to to their offense. So what's going to happen these next next week next couple weeks here? The Steelers are going to finish up this training camp this training camp week. They're going to play the Jaguars this Saturday, and when that happens, I fully expect this this Steelers offense to to give one of these guys to give Jalen Warren a lead look to say, hey, how do you operate behind the first team offensive line? How do you operate, you know, with you know with Mitch Trubisky and, and those guys? How does that play out? Because they know what they're getting from Najee Harris. They don't need to see more of him just being being Najee Harris. They need to see how uh how Jalen Warren, how these guys are going to react in different spots. And you know, if Benny Snell's healthy, they bring him back and they give him his, his shot too. But I'm still saying this could end up being a Benny Snell and Jalen Warren or an Anthony McFarlane Jalen Warren backup uh running back situation behind Najee Harris. And Steelers fans, I don't think you were thinking that this was going to be a positive thing 
going into training camp. I think everyone was doom and gloom about the backup running back situation. Heck, we were talking on this very show. Jordan Howard, Wayne Gallman, go get this guy, go get that guy. They went and got Jimmy McNichols. He got hurt in like one week, and then he was gone already. So everyone's like, oh, no, they're going to be terrible. They're not looking so terrible at backup running back. And I think that's a very good sign for what's coming forward. We want I want to go over other things that happened at practice because there were some other interesting op- observations. I was not there, but I have, you know, my colleagues in the media who do a good job of reporting, and I chat with them. So uh, I want to go over other important things. Kenny Pickett had some showings, and also Kevin Dotson was back. Really important, I think, important things for young offensive players who are trying to make moves here. But first, we got to talk to you guys about one of our great sponsors, Elias Digital. Now, this is about Elias's game plan app. Now, if you don't know about the you don't know about the game plan app, it's it's something that's here on free on your phone and available to help you with the start of the NFL season, a time of the year that I truly love. If you're into sports betting or fantasy and you need a competitive edge to win, this is why you get the Elias game plan app. I can't re- recommend it any higher. It's the ultimate sports betting and fantasy companion for the NFL, the NBA, and Major League Baseball. Elias Game Plan is the only sports app from the most trusted name in sports stats, the Elias Sports Bureau. It's the official statisticians of U.S. pro sports leagues, including the NFL. From the Elias Sports app, you can get you are the Elias Game Act, excuse, Game Planning app. Excuse me. It, you can get player news, league validated stats and records, expert gambling and fantasy analysis, player and team reviews, updated all season long from the most respected research team in the industry. And take my advice: you'll benefit as a better, as a gambler, as a fantasy player by downloading the Elias Game Plan app today. And with the NFL season right around the corner, there's no time to wait. Go right to the, right to the App Store or the Play Store right now. Look, look up the Elias that's Game Plan app. That's E-L-I-A-S, Elias Game Plan app, and get and get started on your great season. We're also brought to you by Built Bar. If you haven't tried the new Built Bar, Chuck Coconut, Coke, Coke, excuse me, cookie dough chunk puff flavor yet, you're missing out. Now, I've been hyping these things already. I'm out of them. I need Bill Bar to send me some more because I'm out of my cookie dough chunk puffs and they taste awesome. And the thing is, is that when you get the, when you get the built bar, built, the regular built bars, they're nice. They're covered in 100% chocolate. They're healthy for you and they're tasty, but the puffs are so, are so much lighter. They taste like a marshmallow, but flavored marshmallow with whatever flavor that they give you. And it's covered in 100% real chocolate and they're low in calories, but high in protein. The cookie dough chunk puff, it's just the same thing. It tastes like it's the cookie dough that your mom used to make cookie cookies with. It's covered in 100% real chocolate and it only come and it comes with only 160 calories. Imagine all that, all that amazing flavor and all that sweet and all that snacking for 160 calories well it packs a, a whopping 15 grams of protein so if you're working out you're trying to get your gains you could do this taste eat something that tastes great and not put on a whole lot of weight run to to snag a box for yourself and your and the family right now it'll be the perfect treat or you can find a really good hiding place and just hoard them all to yourself so go again go to built.com right now get the new cookie dough chunk puff flavor whether you need it for a snack for a workout or late night treat it's available for you right there so when you go to built.com use the promo code lock 15 that's l-o-c-k-e-d-1-5 lock 15 and you'll get 15 percent off your next order when you visit built.com now as y'all know when we do back-to-back ad reads we keep it rolling it's been a while since i've had to say that but hey the ads are coming in baby it's the season so let's get right to it now couple updates here. Kendrick Green did injure his arm, but it does in, in practice, but it does seem like he was able to return to practice and, and be fine. So not, you know, false alarm there on a scare because there was, it looked like for a second there from how people were tweeting out from camp that there was going to be a problem. However, Kevin Dotson was back from his ankle injury and it appears that they were back in rotating them in their 50-50 left guard battle. So for those who thought that, that Kendrick Green just won this battle simply because Kevin Dotson got hurt, think again. Also, looking more at the tape, Kendrick Green did struggle a little bit more than I thought he did. There were some really good run plays where I thought he turned his man inside and he did a really good job. When I watched closer and I saw back, I was like, oh, man, he lost on this one. He lost on that one. Okay, he did lose a little a little bit more than, than, than I thought live when I was watching the game because there's so much to evaluate when you're up in the press box. But it doesn't mean that he's terrible. It still means that he's making – I do think he made, he's making progress. But Kevin Dotson, this is going to be his week. If he can stay healthy, he's probably going to get a start with the, with the first-team offensive line and get to play against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And if he does that and he shows a good a good showing – this could be his way to solidify the left guard position. Now, I've talked about this 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 camp battle this camp battle back in mini camp and OTAs when we were talking. I interviewed both of these guys and had their had them right on this show talking about hey 
This is a 50-50 battle between us. We respect each other. There's all love. We're just pushing each other to be better. I think Kendrick Green has gotten better. I think he's gotten nastier. I think he's getting he's getting sharper in how he does things, but he's still a bit undersized, and he's still getting blown up by guys who get who are bigger and can get their hands inside on him. Kevin Dotson doesn't have those size problems. And uh, I, I will say, and I, I said this with Jim Wexel uh, last Monday leading into last week, um, that – uh, I, I felt that Kevin Dotson has looked better in in practice. Now, granted, that was just practice. That was that was not that was before he injured his ankle, and that was not uh, you know official gameplay. So we'll, we'll, we have to see it in full before we can fully endorse it. But I do think that Kevin Dotson, if he's able to if he's able to stay healthy all week, this could be a solidifying week for him to earn that left guard spot and solidify the offensive line heading in. But who else also solidified some things? Maybe not solidified, but further provided more evidence was Kenny Pickett who looked really good apparently in both seven shots and in 11 on 11 drills when I was when I was looking into what happened there and here's the thing about Kenny Pickett and I'm telling you right now if you're a person who's doubted him from the jump I've said hey I'm not saying Kenny Pickett's going to dominate the NFL right away. It's going to take him time to learn things, but he's this true student of the game. When he improves, those improvements stick. It's not just, you know, you know, happy. It's not just a roller coaster, hot and cold all the time. He's, he's not going to fluke into situations. He's going to earn his, his wins and his, and his, and his, uh, his successes. And let's, let's, let's face it. Saturday was a success for him. Two touchdowns. The, I think he had the highest passer rating of a rookie quarterback debut in a preseason game or whatever random stats were thrown out there about him. I thought I thought he looked good. And the fact that he's coming in Monday and still performing that way, and also Mike Tomlin put him with the second team, that's a really good sign. Now the question is, will Mike Tomlin keep him with the second team when the preseason happens, my prediction, I think he will based off of today. I wasn't so sure. I think that I was starting to think maybe he'll give Mason more of a chance this week. But when I heard that he was starting him, at the, uh, we're putting him with the, with the second squad. That tells me Mike Tomlin's rotation of how he's operated the, the quarterback battle for most of camp. And again, the quarterback battle is more so between Mason and Kenny for the two spot. Mitch is going to be the starter. I've said that a million times here. But for Kenny Pickett, this is his time to say, "Hey, this is my set. I, I, I can, I can run the second team offense." And if he's able to do that this week, that's going to put to bed a lot of the a lot of the quarterback camp battles uh, questions for Mason Rudolph. And uh, and and listen, I'm not a Mason hater. I think he's done a fine job. I said this on Channel 11's The Final Word on Sunday night. The people who booed Mason Rudolph, that was childish. That was disrespectful. You, 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 it, it's, a, it's a shame that you call yourself Steelers fans if you're doing that. Mason Rudolph ain't do nothing to you other than get clocked, get knocked out by Earl Thomas, clocked over a head by Miles Garrett, still come back and fight, fight hard and be a Steeler. And then after a couple of years of being on the bench behind Ben Roethlisberger, when he thought he was first getting his chance to start, the Steelers went and signed Mitch Trubisky and drafted Kenny Pickett. And you never heard Mason say, oh, woe is me. He said, hey, I got to go earn a spot. And that's what he's been, been, been out there trying to do. He hasn't complained once. I think that should earn people's respect. But that does not mean that he just needs to be given the starting position at quarterback. And he hasn't, hasn't earned that yet. I still say Mitch Trubisky is that guy. And I will say if Kenny Pickett continues to grow, there's a chance he could pass Mason Rudolph in this offseason. Again, I don't think Kenny Pickett's going to be ready to just start you know, this season, but Kenny Pickett was cycling through his reads. He was on time. He was in rhythm. If he's able to stay on time and in rhythm with the second team, that's going to be a really good sign moving forward, and it might be a tough sign for, for Mason Rudolph to, to, to handle. We'll see how that plays out, but this is going to be the time, and Mike, Mike Tomlin has also all, all up training camp long. It's been Mitch with the ones, and then, you know, it started with Mason at twos and Kenny with threes, but then they start to switch it up. Kenny would run some some twos. Mason would run some threes, and then they'd, they'd swap them around. I fully expect now. I wasn't so sure going into Monday, but when I when when it was when he put Kenny Pickett in with the second squads consistently Monday, that's a sign to me that Kenny's going to probably get a chance to run the second team. So uh, this is just another chance for him to level up a little bit, show that he's a little bit more ready for the NFL than a lot of people thought, and get him some more chances to make plays and say, and say hey, this is how you be on time and in rhythm in the NFL. We'll see how that plays out with all the things that are going on with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Training camp again goes to until Thursday when they break camp, or they'll have and then they'll head they'll head back to their South Side facility. Full disclosure: I have now started with the Pittsburgh Post Gazette with my pit job. I will be at pit practice for the rest of the week, so I will not be able to go to training camp practices because they're out in St. Vincent College, and that's just going to be a long haul. However, 
I will be back. I will be at Epstein's practice once they relocate back to their South Side facility at the UPMC Rooney Sports Complex. Because that's basically what I did last year when I was with DK Pittsburgh Sports and with the Locked On Steelers podcast. So you're still going to eventually when they get back, you're still going to see me getting around. We're going to get more players interviews. I still have some players interviews. I want to show you guys, not just from the game, but from practices. We're going to get to those as the week rolls on. We're going to have Arthur Motes on for our Thursday episode. Uh, so stay tuned for that. We're hoping to have Jenna Harner back on for our Friday episode. We got a lot planned for you this week. Thanks so much for checking us out here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Again, I'm your host, Chris Carter. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Read my work at the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, where I cover recovering pit pit right now and pit football. They're in the middle of their training camp. They just got ranked 17th, the number 17th team in the country by the Associated Press. That's going to be an exciting season, exciting start to the season with the Backyard Brawl coming up. You're going to get all of that from me. I believe my first piece goes up Wednesday. We'll see how that plays out. But all in all, I hope you're enjoying this content here on the Lockdown Steelers podcast as well. Follow us on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, YouTube. Rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts with a positive comment. You get a shout at the end of the show. Thanks again for checking us out here. I'm back on your screens and in your ears very soon. 